Homeostasis is all about keeping things balanced. You need to know that it's the maintenance of a constant internal environment. Now that means controlling your temperature, controlling ion levels, blood sugar, many different things. So today I'm gonna to build with you foundational knowledge you need to understand this area of AQA A-level biology. Let's get into it. Okay, so let's talk about the fundamentals of homeostasis. Some key terms and definitions, first of all. Well, firstly, homeostasis is the maintenance of a constant internal environment. It's all about keeping things balanced. Negative feedback is a corrective mechanism where if something goes beyond a set point, for example, your body temperature should be 37 degrees, a sequence of changes will bring it back to the set point. So if we get too hot, we sweat, too cold, we shiver, and that's really a good example to be aware of. Next is positive feedback. This is where a change leads to more change. So we say that this amplifies a change, and some examples of this include uterine contractions during childbirth and blood clotting. Receptors detect changes. So some key examples of receptors include the rods and cones in your eye, they're light receptors. You've also got chemoreceptors in the carotid artery, pressure or mechanoreceptors in the skin known as Pacinian corpuscles. The list goes on. A hormone is a chemical messenger in the body. Now, compared to nervous transmission, it's much slower, but its effects are more widespread and longer lasting. So key examples of that include estrogen, testosterone and ADH and they're secreted directly into the blood and they bind to specific receptors and they'll have different effects on different cells. So endocrine glands release hormones into the blood and a key example of that in homeostasis is the pituitary gland which secretes ADH. Finally, metabolism is all of the chemical reactions in the body. Let's take a look at negative feedback for example. So your body would be at 37 degrees and all the enzyme catalyzed reactions will be progressing at a good rate of reaction. But let's imagine the, the temperature increases beyond this. So the factor increases above the set point on the top left here. Now what will happen is receptors will detect a change and trigger corrective responses. Now in the case of your temperature increasing beyond the set point, you will sweat and you'll also have vasodilation, which is where the arterioles open up, the lumen of them increases, and that means more blood flow can get to the surface and therefore you can lose more heat via sweating and via external heat loss to the environment. Now, eventually those changes should bring your temperature back to the set point, at which point sweating and vasodilation will stop. Now, let's imagine on the left-hand side, if your temperature dropped below a set point, this time receptors are going to detect a change below the set point and trigger a sequence of responses to correct that. So for example, shivering and vasoconstriction. Now shivering will lead to a greater rate of respiration, which will release heat to the electron transport chain. And vasoconstriction will mean that blood isn't flowing as close to the surface, so you're less likely, or you'll lose heat at a lower rate compared to if it was flowing at the surface. And again, once the factors return to the set point of 37 degrees in this case, those changes stop. So some factors that need to be controlled. You need to be aware of these three factors for A-level biology. Number one, temperature. As we've just mentioned, this needs to be controlled, but why does it need to be controlled? Well, if temperatures are too high, enzymes get denatured as the particles gain heat energy, they vibrate more, and this can break hydrogen bonds, denaturing the enzyme. That will mean they can't form enzyme substrate complexes. Now, if the temperature is too low, that's going to mean that the rate of reactions is too slow because there's not enough kinetic energy and therefore molecules are not colliding frequently enough. So around 37 degrees is the optimum temperature for enzyme catalyzed reactions in the body. The second key variable that needs to be controlled is glucose, and we call this glucoregulation. Now, this needs to be constant so that cells are provided with glucose for both aerobic and anaerobic respiration. And we have to respire, all living things respire. Now, the other thing with glucose is that not only is it needed for respiration and the formation of ATP, it's also needed to control water potential because glucose is soluble in water. So if we have lots of glucose, if glucose is too high, basically the blood, the plasma of the blood 
will have a lower water potential and that will draw water out from surrounding cells via the process of osmosis. And this can happen vice versa as well. Thirdly, pH needs to be controlled. Now, the majority of enzymes in the body work best at around pH 7, but there are some notable examples. For example, pepsin in the stomach works best at a pH of 2, which is great considering it's surrounded by hydrochloric acid. Now, if the pH is too high or low, basically the ionic and hydrogen bonds within the tertiary structure of the enzyme can get broken. And this would therefore denature the enzymes. Now, finally, having separate negative feedback systems, one for each variable, means that we have greater control over the internal environment and we can maintain that more effectively. So some exam practice next of all, because I know for AQA, you need this practice for your A-level biology. So number one, what is meant by negative feedback? Well, the mark scheme says where a change triggers a corrective mechanism that reduces the effect of a change. So it's negative. Number two, describe and explain how the maintenance of a constant internal body temperature allows metabolic reactions to occur at an optimum rate. Now, this is a five mark question, so pause the video and have a go at this. So now we'll come the answer. So your first mark is for saying 37 degrees is the optimum body temperature for enzyme reactions. So AQA want you to know this. Number two, if body temperatures increase above this, hydrogen bonds in the tertiary structure of enzymes will be broken, causing them to denature. So for A-level biology, you need to know about hydrogen bonds, you need to know about the tertiary structure of enzymes, and you will get asked about this if this question comes up. Number three, the rate of reaction will therefore decrease. So we've got three marks in the bank. Your fourth mark is for saying if the temperature is too low, molecules will have less kinetic energy. And your final mark is for saying, therefore there will be less chance of a successful collision between enzyme and substrate and fewer enzyme substrate complexes. So catch me in the next video for osmoregulation, for glucoregulation, and we'll master the topic of homeostasis. I will see you in the next one.